given that I'm 39, I started my career very young. Uh, so uh, so uh, this is our uh, our first uh, summit, and I want to you know I'm looking out uh, at this crowd, and it's uh, awesome uh, that all of you could make it today. Um, where Sengen started uh, almost uh, well, I guess four years ago was uh, in a well much smaller room than this but uh, like-minded people that wanted to make a difference. Uh, no one was happy with uh, the position that where Canada was. Uh, you know, we were obviously a, a leader uh, in this, in this uh, ICT telecom space, and we stumbled a little bit, right, with Nortel and, and uh, even BlackBerry as well. So um, we're about to change that, and you know, this is really how Sengen came about, was a, a number of industry folks that really wanted to make a difference, make an impact. And uh, that's what I want to talk to you about today. So, smart infrastructure, smart world. Um, oh. Smart clicker? <laughs> what we need is a software defined clicker. There we go. Okay, I, I hate to start off with a downer slide, but honestly, uh, you know, when you look at the World Economic Forum, Report last year alone we slipped from uh, number eleven to number fourteen. Anyone happy with that in this room? No, that's what I thought. Uh, did four years ago I think we knew that, right? So I didn't know we we're going to slip to fourteen, but I knew that we were in trouble. And uh, I think it collectively, as you know, Karen and as the mayor pointed out, uh, you know, it's kind of up to us to, to make a difference. I think the people in this room and and obviously many others uh, have the power to do that. So. It's not all doom and gloom, okay? We have uh, we're, we have a plan, and uh, you know, having worked at a large company, you're always in phase three of that plan, right? So you're, you have always has a couple of steps. So Sengen's uh, entering its uh, third year, and uh, think of this like a uh, well, like a like a chair, right? So on that chair, there's four legs. Uh, we have uh, the, uh, the folks at the top, the uh, students, right? So the uh, the brains, uh, the millennials. Uh, <laughs> always, uh, always very interesting. Uh, I think uh, Terry once said, you know, you need the gray hair folks, and in my case, no hair. But uh, you also need the young people as well that have the ideas, right? And that uh, anything can be done. We don't tell these folks that these problems are unsolvable. <laughs> that would be a mistake, right? Because they need to be solvable. Uh, we also have the innovators, the small companies, the small Canadian companies that. You know, the ones that are really making a difference, right? So some of them that are actually here today, folks like Corsa, NSI, uh, Scenix, uh, Novaflow, and so on, uh, Invic, uh, fantastic technology right in our own backyard, right? And uh, obviously uh, across the country. We have government, so the NC folks, so they believed in our plan, right? They basically gave us some seed money to kind of kick this idea off. And uh, obviously we want to do a lot more. Um, and then of course we have uh, industry. Uh, you can't do anything without the backing of industry, right? So folks like, you know, our membership, our partners, and so on, that basically made this happen. And so all four of them play a very important role. Now, what is a smart infrastructure? So my tagline, if anything that you walk away with today remembering is, if it's not connected, it's not smart, okay? And I believe that to be true because, you know, think about if you're trying to build a smart city, you know, where you have buildings, where your HVAC systems don't talk to your electrical systems and don't talk to your water system and so on. Well, obviously it's not going to work. You know, same with the autonomous vehicle. If the, if the autonomous vehicle doesn't talk to the traffic lights and so on, then obviously, again, it's not smart. It's not going to work. And uh, I, I believe in building something once, build it right, and use it many. Okay, and obviously based on open standards and open source. Now, guys like me, we've done a great job of confusing everyone. Quite frankly, we make a lot of money, right? Uh, confusing folks and then having the answers for them. So things like, what is smart infrastructure? It's software defined, it's network function virtualization. It's cloud, it's fog, it's IoT, it's 5G, da da da, right? It's all of those things. Uh, but the good news is, is that all of that rides on a common infrastructure, uh, which is what we're building. Um, so this is uh, my idea about, uh, you know, what are some of the problems that are occurring and what are the opportunities, more importantly, right? So you have uh, internet. Anyone happy with their internet at home? I have granddaddy's internet. I, I helped, uh, I used to work for the phone company and I helped put this in 25 years ago and I'm enjoying that same rate today, okay? And I'm not happy about it. 
So uh, what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna change it. Uh, Internet of Things, uh, this is awesome. I mean, how many people have, uh, you know, eight, 10 devices at home? I know, I'm sure all of you do, maybe more. Um, and it's gonna be continuing to have more devices. How are all those things gonna scale? Right? We need to do something different than we're doing today in order to, you know, for service providers to make money. Everyone in this economy needs to make money or the model breaks, right? So in this case, we're talking about scaling something using open source and open standards. These are the, uh, the members uh, that uh, have supported us. We actually have a couple of new members that were a little bit too shy to be announced today, but uh, stay tuned in the next weeks and months. Um, but these are the, the companies that believed in us and continue to support us through, through uh, dollars, through services, uh, through supporting uh, students, uh, initiatives, and so on. So uh, hats off to them and really appreciate their support. And of course, they do help pay my salary as well, so thank you for that. All right, so in terms of uh, the Ontario Smart Infrastructure, this is something that was announced uh, in an MOU uh, when the Ontario and Quebec governments met. Uh, what we plan to do is basically link all the innovation centers uh, across the province. And uh, in this model, effectively, what we would have is let's say someone wants to do an autonomous vehicle uh, collaboration, let's say between, I don't know, Waterloo and, and maybe QNX uh, here in Ottawa. Effectively, we would have that in place for them. Or uh, another example might be a mining community up in Timmins that needs to talk to something down at Mars at, uh, at head office. And so this, this infrastructure basically would be multi-purpose and would be used to, to, to connect these various uh, uh, innovations. And the point being that uh, you know, if we didn't have that in infrastructure in place, you know, uh, effectively what would happen is people would kind of build their own and start to connect things together. And we want to do it, kind of build it once, use it many as I talked about. So this is a program that we have in place with the, the uh, federal, so basically expanding kind of what we're doing in Ottawa today, what we're doing, we have plan to do in Ontario, and effectively uh, you know, bring this across the country. So again, a collaboration. So you know, Canada ge is geographically challenged, but obviously uh, a network makes us closer together. I mean, basically there's no difference whether you're you know, downtown Ottawa uh, in Canada or in Vancouver, if you're all connected uh, you know, with awesome infrastructure. Now, these are some of the programs that we've been talking to, uh, you know, some of the local folks about. So, you know, I, I love this kind of stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm a kind of a techie guy as well. But imagine, you know, technology for the sake of technology is irrelevant, right? Like, unless you're actually doing something to change people's lives, uh, you're not making an impact, and you're not making the right impact. In this particular case, I mean, obviously, agriculture, we all need to eat, right? And uh, so, uh, how can we improve, uh, you know, make the Canadian farmers uh, be more productive. Well, this is a very interesting program that the folks in Barhaven are looking at. Another one is Extreme Internet. Imagine connecting the University of Guelph, uh, who are experts in that field, with uh, you know with the farmers that are local here in Ottawa. Um, what about uh, autonomous vehicles? So, um, you know, again, using the model of what was announced with the Ontario government, where you have the University of Waterloo that's collaborating, and uh, you know, obviously having something down at the Innovation Center downtown Ottawa. Uh, that's all possible with a smart connected infrastructure. Uh, what about a 5G, uh, I call it living lab, uh, an infrastructure that basically would be, uh, you know, all of our members and others that would put in equipment and facilities and uh, validate some of these technologies because it's one thing to talk about it, but you actually have to do it, right? And that's the one model that I really like about the open source world is you know in the standards bodies you would talk about something for a long time and for example the 5g standard it would be 2020 by the time it comes out right and they started i don't know probably five years ago four years ago that's a long time whereas you give that to a programmer and they'll go while they're talking they basically have a piece of code and go here go try to see if it works right and then you go from there and i think the the right answer is kind of that balance in between the middle this is a, an area that uh, we have a proof of concept out here with uh, Juniper and Inicide. It's absolutely fantastic. It's a, the concept is open, uh, open internet, open extreme internet. So you have, imagine municipal fiber, uh, open source hardware, open source software. Okay? Basically giving uh, service providers uh, equal access. Imagine getting, instead of my five megabit per second, getting 10 gigabit for, I don't know, 10 bucks a month. Right? That'd be awesome. Uh, and this is my only techie slide here, so you know uh, we are in a very uh, uh, you know uh, tech savvy event. 
Um, but this is one of the cool programs that uh, a couple of my engineers uh, are working on within Sengen, with along with uh, Cisco and Red Hat and a few others. And what's interesting about this project is Cisco took uh, uh, at least, I said 30 years, it wasn't quite 30, maybe it was 10, so I exaggerated a little bit. But they took a lot of that technology and intellectual property and ported it into open source. And now it's available to everyone. Right? So think about how fast that would have evolved uh, the, you know, the space uh, had they not done that. And uh, you can see just on the middle bar graphs that the performance is absolutely spectacular. So if uh, you're interested, please drop by the Sanjay booth and we'll give you um, an idea of what we're up to. All right, so as I uh, conclude here, remember the one thing I'm gonna ask you, uh, you know, smart infrastructure, but it's not connected, it's not smart. Thank you. <laughs>